What are decentralized applications, dApps? The word decentralization has become very popular since blockchain technology was launched. Blockchain technology has brought so many innovations to the world. One of the most exciting is a new concept called decentralized applications. Hi, and welcome to today's video where we will be looking at decentralized applications. We will be looking at what decentralized apps mean, how they function, their benefit, and drawbacks. We will also be looking at how you can use decentralized apps, so make sure you don't go anywhere. What are decentralized applications? DApps. A decentralized application is a regular application that runs on an open source peer to peer network of computers. Some of the most famous decentralized apps run on blockchains like Ethereum, Binance, Smart Chain, etc. They are called decentralized because the application is run by multiple computers, nodes, in a network. Also, the ownership of decentralized apps is shared by users of the network through tokenization. Since the launch of Ethereum in July 2015, many decentralized applications have popped up. Blockchain based decentralized apps rely on smart contracts for their functioning. Any app can be decentralized so long as its running is distributed among several computers and its code base is open source. Some examples of decentralized apps include decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, MinSwap, ADAX, etc. Other examples of decentralized apps are games like Axie Infinity, CryptoKitties, etc. We provide software development, recruitment, and consulting services in the fields of fintech, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain worldwide. If you're looking for a job as a developer, email your resume to jobs at qqnade.com. That's jobs at qqnade.com. Contact us for a free consultation through our website at qqnade.com. If you'd like more details, check out the description below this video. How do decentralized apps work? To understand the basics of how a decentralized app works, we need to go into a little software design. A regular app has two main parts, the front end and the back end. The front end deals with what the user sees. For example, Twitter, your feed, and every other thing you can see is the front end. The back end, on the other hand, refers to the server running the app and keeping its data. The back end would be that part that stores all the information about your profile. Regular apps use a central server for their back end. All their information is stored on that central server. Taking down the app would only require taking out that central server. Decentralized apps share the load of their back end to multiple servers. This way, the app can function faster thanks to the computing power of multiple servers. This arrangement makes it practically impossible to shut down a decentralized app by taking out a few of its servers. This also means that no one person has control over the servers. There are generally two types of decentralized apps. Some run on several peer-to-peer -peer servers, but not on a blockchain. Examples of this kind of dApps are Popcorn Time, Open Bazaar, and BitTorrent. The other types of decentralized apps are built on a blockchain, mostly Ethereum. Dapps built on blockchains use smart contracts to control how they function. Smart contracts are simply pieces of code that execute given instructions when certain conditions are met. Also, dapps that run on blockchains use tokenization to share ownership of the dapp. So, for example, if Twitter was built on a blockchain, no one individual would be able to delete another person's tweets. Also, the owners of Twitter would be its token holders. They would be able to vote on how Twitter should function. The more tokens a person holds, the higher their voting power. We provide software development, recruitment, and consulting services in the fields of fintech, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain worldwide. If you're looking for a job as a developer, email your resume to jobs at qqnade.com. That's jobs at qqnade.com. Contact us for a free consultation through our website at qqnade.com. If you'd like more details, check out the description below this video. Benefits of dApps So what are the benefits of dApps? First of all, dApps are resistant to censorship. Many apps like Twitter have a single point of failure because they are controlled by a central authority. This means that they could easily be shut down. For instance, if the government wanted to shut down Twitter, it would only require the shutting down of Twitter's central servers. A decentralized app, on the other hand, runs on multiple computers within a network. Shutting down a few computers won't harm the network since the network runs on multiple nodes. 
Also, no one individual would be able to dictate what goes on in a decentralized app. If Twitter was decentralized, no one would be able to censor tweets or suspend people's accounts. The next benefit of a decentralized app is something called fault tolerance. If a single computer goes out in the network, the app would still function fine. The performance might degrade significantly due to the number of nodes that are down, but most of the network would still function. Another benefit is that you can remain anonymous while using dApps. These days, there is a lot of concern with how applications use and store user information. A lot of people are worried that the apps they use collect their information and use it to target ads at them, or worse, sell the information to the highest bidder. With dApps, you rarely need to submit any personal information. This is great for people who are looking for social communities they can belong to without having to put their personal information at risk. Limitations of dApps Like with everything in life, dApps are not perfect. They have their own drawbacks. Let's look at some of them. The first drawback of dApps is that they are at risk of hacks. Since dApps are run on open source code, anyone can simply look up the code base of a particular dApp. Hackers can simply look through the code searching for weaknesses they could exploit. It's why there's been a series of hacks on dApps in recent times. The next major drawback of dApps is its usability. Dapps are still a very new concept, and so they don't have many users yet. This could be partly responsible for the fact that so many dapps have a poor user experience. The user interface then has the unintended effect of discouraging new users. But hopefully, as dapps become more mainstream, developers would put more effort into creating a smooth user interface for their dapps. Next up on the list of limitations of dapps is their low user number. Usually, the strength of a decentralized app depends on the number of users it has. Many dApps have too few users, and this makes the apps less secure since the strength of the network depends on how many active nodes it has. Another limitation of dApps is they lead to congestion of the blockchain supporting them. As you know, dApps run on blockchains. Networks like Ethereum have a very high number of users. Sometimes this causes the network to get congested. Popular dApp use cases. So what are some popular dApps that exist out there today? There are many, but I will give you a few to illustrate how versatile decentralized apps are. First of all, we'll be looking at Chainlink. Chainlink is a decentralized app that provides Oracle network services to blockchains. Oracles are software that allow blockchains to connect with other non-blockchain systems. Thanks to Chainlink, smart contracts that need specific inputs like dates, weather, etc. can get access to that information. Chainlink also enables interoperability, which simply means blockchains communicating with each other. Chainlink uses the Link token to reward its network users for the work they do, collecting off-chain information, formatting, and other off-chain computation. Network operators can only stake their tokens. They are not allowed to sell it. However, they are free to charge their own rates for the services and resources they provide. Another noteworthy decentralized app is Aragon. Aragon is a project that aims to make the creation and management of DAOs possible. For the uninformed, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. DAOs are the equivalent of regular organizations only with a decentralized governance system, i.e. members of the DAO vote on what projects to execute and how the DAO should operate. Aragon wants to make it easy for people to run entire organizations on a blockchain. Aragon uses smart contracts to eliminate the need for third-party intermediary services. The next decentralized application we will look at is Gollum. Gollum is a project that aims to make the buying and selling of computational resources easy and straightforward. For example, say you wanted to do some CGI rendering, but you had no equipment. Renting the equipment at a local computer hardware store might be too expensive. And that's where Gollum comes in. Gollum connects users who need computing resources to users who are willing to rent out those resources. The network then rewards users with the GNT token. Many of Gollum's users describe the network as an alternative to cloud computing services, an alternative that's fully controlled by the users. Another popular decentralized application is CryptoKitties. CryptoKitties is an Ethereum-based game that allows users to collect, buy, and sell digital cats. These cats are custom designed from a range of 256 DNA attributes. CryptoKitties immediately became a smash hit in 2017, the same year the game was released. There have been cases of CryptoKitties congesting the Ethereum network. To play CryptoKitties, you must hold Ether in your wallet. 
How to connect to dApps. So, how do you use a dApp? First of all, you need to remember that most dApps are built on a blockchain, usually Ethereum blockchain, and that's because Ethereum pioneered smart contract technology. There are dApps on Binance Smart Chain as well as on EOS and Tron. To connect with a dApp, you'll need a crypto wallet. You can either use a wallet on your phone or a mobile crypto wallet. The next thing you'll need is a dApp browser. A dApp browser will allow you to browse through different decentralized apps out there. Mind you, most regular browsers can't access dApps due to how the browsers are designed. Many of those browsers would need a MetaMask extension to access dApps. However, iPhone users can use dApps directly from browsers like Safari, Firefox, etc. Once you have the dApp browser running, look for the dApp you want to use. Mind you, to use the dApp, you would need to hold some tokens of the blockchain the dApp was built on. For example, if you wanted to use an Ethereum-based dApp, you would need to hold some Ether in your wallet before accessing the app. Like you would need to hold some Ether before you play CryptoKitties. A decentralized app is just like any other app. The major difference is that decentralized apps run on a peer-to-peer -peer network of computer servers. Most apps are built on blockchain networks. Regular apps are controlled by a single computer. With decentralized apps, the functioning and maintenance of the app are shared among multiple computers within the network. When a developer creates a regular app, they retain control of how the app functions. With decentralized apps, once the app is released, the developer loses control of the app. This means that other developers can build on the dApp's code base without needing to get permission from the developer of the app. This is down to the fact that blockchains are open source and peer to peer. Decentralized apps offer an extra level of freedom since no single entity can regulate how they function. However, it is important to know that decentralized apps are not perfect. They are susceptible to hacks since their code structure is open source, meaning that anyone can get access to it. Lastly, due to the newness of the technology, most apps don't have a great user interface. This, in turn, discourages new users and reduces the growth of the technology. Nonetheless, dApps are a great piece of technology that will only improve as their users grow and the industry gets older. We provide software development, recruitment, and consulting services in the fields of fintech, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain worldwide. If you're looking for a job as a developer, email your resume to jobs at qqnade.com. That's jobs at qqnade.com. Contact us for a free consultation through our website at qqnade.com. If you'd like more details, check out the description below this video.